Take two. <laughs> Sorry about that, guys. For those of you who saw chapter 22, we were going. <laughs> and, you were like... and you were hearing the little one. Because I left room. Bluetooth on. And her headphones. We're in there. So. That's a first. <laughs> <laughs> and a last. Showing you these again. And these. One time. From my little one. She was supposed to name them, but she has oh. not done that yet. It's going to take ten minutes. What? We have to restart. Maybe, wait it, maybe it won't take start. that long. Our Kindle's acting crazy now. Optimizing <laughs> system. I swanee. Anyways, we have Festus. I'll do this while you're figuring stuff out. I okay. have Festus. Sawyer. I think we're okay. Yep. Nutty Buddy. Rocky. Don't tell me. Tell me. Darts with an M. Oh, God. Rhymes with squirrel. Merle the squirrel. I've had trouble with him, too. I don't know why. Me with that either. name. Okay. Let's get on with it. We have to go up, remember? Because we have to re read the chapter that we didn't read. Oh. I thought that was... <laughs> Duh. Duh. Whoops. Well, maybe I can read this a little better since I've already read it. Yeah. <laughs> Chapter 21, right? 22. 22. Chapter 22. Tom Sawyer. Okay. I'm joined the new order of cadets of temperance, being attracted by the showy char character of their regalia. He promised to abstain from smoking, chewing, and profanity mm -hmm. as long as he remained a member. One well, of these days we're going to have our brick wall. The nut house up, all our stuff up on the wall, and a shelf with these squirrels. Uh oh. Uh oh. Smoking, chewing, profanity as long as he remained a member. Remember. Okay. Now he found out a new thing. Namely, get your feet off of my. <laughs> Sorry. Feet on my arm. <laughs> now he found out a new thing. Namely, that to promise to do a thing is the surest Not way and. To not do a thing is the surest way in the world to make a body want to go and do that very thing. Tom soon found himself torment, tormented with a desire to drink and swear. <laughs> and the desire grew to be so intense that nothing but the hope of a chance to display himself in his red sash kept him from withdrawing from the order. Fourth of July was coming, but he soon gave that up. Gave up before he had worn his shackles over 48 hours. And that just means from not swearing and doing all that stuff. And fixed his hopes upon old Judge Frazier, Justice of the Peace, who was apparently on his deathbed and would have a big public funeral. Since he was so high an official, during three days, Tom was deeply concerned about the judge's condition and hungry for news of it. Sometimes his hopes are in high, so high that he would venture to get out his regalia and practice before the looking glass, which is a... Uh, they spell bad. They spelled that wrong. No, it's spelled like um, they spell it in England. I don't know why. Oh. Maybe the whoever wrote it this was did spelled, it in... Yeah. It was Practices spelled, with an S. But it's she normally She was asking C. about that. And what's a looking glass? A mirror. Mm hmm But the judge had a most discouraging way of fluctuating. And Tom's thinking about this because he knows that if the judge dies, then they'll, the, this, what is it, core of, the cadet, cadets of temperance would march in his funeral and stuff. And now Tom said he was out, right? Or did it say he was out yet? I can't read it. I already read it. Okay. Let's see. But the judge had a most discouraging way of fluctuating. At last, he was pronounced upon the mend and then conv convalescent. Tom was disgusted and felt a sense of injury, too. 
Now Harry resigns. He handed in his resignation at once, and that night the judge suffered a relapse and passed away. Tom reser resolved that he would never trust a man like that again. The funeral was a fine thing. The cadets paraded in a style calculated to kill the late member with envy. Tom. Tom was a free boy again, however. There was something in that. He could drink and swear now, but found to his surprise that he didn't want to. Simple fact that he could took the desire away and the charm of it. Tom presently wondered to find that his coveted vacation was beginning to hang a little heavily on his hands. He attempted a diary, but nothing happened during three days, and he abandoned it. The first of all the minstrel shows came to town and made a sensation. Tom and Joe Harper got up a band of performers and were happy for two days. Even the glorious fourth was in some sense a failure, for it rained hard. There was no procession in consequence, and the greatest man in the world, as Tom supposed, Mr. Benton, an actual U.S. Senator, proved an overwhelming disappointment, for he was not 25 feet high, <laughs> nor even anywhere in the neighborhood of it. A circus came. The boys played circus for three days, afterward in tents made of rag carpeting. Admission, three pins for boys, two for girls. Oh, and, are the pins like... We were trying to figure out what the Is pins were. Is it like the were. form of money? I, like fake money? Maybe I think so. that's what it is. It's for admission. It's, a, it's mm -hmm. three pins for the boys and well, two for the girls. I thought it maybe had something to do with the marbles, but I don't know why they call it pins. Um, that's right. why I want the book back that has the... So we're going to go to the library, library tomorrow. Because it gives you a lot of info in the margins. And then the circusing was abandoned. A phrenologist and a mesmerizer came and went again and left the village duller and drearier than ever. You want to read that? No. There were some boys and girls parties, but they were so few and so delightful that they only made the aching bones <laughs> between <laughs> ache the harder. Becky Thatcher was gone to Constantinople, home to stay with her parents during vacation. Stop! <laughs> read if you want to. I want to read. But, okay, go. Read. So there was no bright side to life anywhere. The dreadful secret of the murder was a chronic misery. It was a very cancer for a permanency in pain. Then came the measles. During two long weeks, Tom lay a prisoner, dead to the world and its happenings. He was very ill. He was in, interested in nothing. When he got upon his feet at last and moved feebly downtown, a melancholy change had come over everything and every creature. There had been a revival, and everyone got religion, not only the adults, but even the boys and girls. Tom went about hoping against hope for the sight of one blessed, sinful face, but disappointment crossed him everywhere. He found Joe Harper studying from a studying testament. a testament and turned sadly away from the depressing spectacle. He saw Ben Rogers and found him visiting the poor with a basket of tracts. He hunted up Jim Hollis, who called his attention to the precious blessing of his late measles as a warning. To every boy he encountered added another ton to his depression, and when in desperation he flew for refuge at last, to the bosom of Huckleberry Finn. <clears throat> was that intentional? And was uh, okay. and was received with a scriptural scriptural quotation. Is it in Huck in the scriptures? What? Hurry, Must have been have some. Like okay. His heart broke, and he crept home into bed, realizing that he alone of all the town was lost forever and forever. And that night, there came on a terrific storm with driving rain, awful claps of thunder, and blinding sheets of lightning. He covered his head with his bedclothes and waited in a horror of suspense for his doom, for he had not the shadow of a doubt that all this hubbub was about him. He believed he had taxed the forbearance of the powers above to the extremity of endurance, and that this was the result. 
it might have seemed to him a waste of pomp and ammunition to kill a bug with a battery of artillery, but there seemed nothing incongruous about the getting up such an expensive thunderstorm as this to knock the turf from under an insect like himself. By and by, the tempest is spin itself and died without accomplishing its object. The boy's first impulse was to be grateful and reform. His second was to wait for there might not be any more storms. The next day, the doctors were back. Time had relapsed. The three weeks he spent on his back this time seemed an entire age. When he got abroad, ab abroad at last, he was hardly grateful that he had been, <coughs> excuse me, he had been spared. Remembering how lonely was his estate, how companionless and forlorn he was, he drifted listlessly down the street and found Jim Hollis acting as judge in a juvenile court that was trying a cat for murder. In the presence of her victim, a bird. He found Joe Harper and Huck Finn up an alley eating a stolen melon. Poor lads, they, like Tom, had suffered a relapse. I'm sure Tom was glad about that. And that's the end of chapter that's 22. That's the end of 22. Finally, we hope it goes through. All right. And we found out that this actually has parts. So we just Apparently finished one part, part five. Apparently we're on part six. So we are going to be on part six Wait, how many with chapter 23. How many chapters? I don't know how many chapters. There? It's hard to tell. With These are illustrations. It says here that's 25, 6, 7. But so I guess that's. But I don't think that's. That's part. That must be part seven. Because we're on part 26 now. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, we'll get the book. Green. It's that lovely junk outside um anywho we will try to get the book mm -hmm. in the morning or sometime tomorrow and then when we have questions maybe they'll be explained in the margins i do like that yeah yeah and we're right there right and you got that mark so we should be good yeah and we'll say adieu to you and you and you and, and be sweet. And don't, don't be ugly. ugly. Thanks for all the happy meal earlier today. I hope you all enjoyed it. Seems so by most of your comments. And appreciate each and every one of you. Love you. Bye.